Apart from our beloved Green Goliath, Marvel enthusiasts have revered the OG Red Hulk for as long as it has existed. But the new Annihilation 2099 miniseries has completely turned our head with the newest version of Red Hulk, and I am here for it. Over the past few years, Steve Orlando has revitalized Marvel's iconic 2099 universe, bringing in refreshing energy to the futuristic world and so far he has done a banger job to take 2099 stories into uncharted territory with Annihilation 2099 by introducing Nova 2099, Star-Lord 2099, Red Hulk 2099, and Silver Surfer 2099. Now, the latest release from Marvel's Annihilation 2099 miniseries, Rage Reborn, gives us the brand new version of Red Hulk, and this take on the Crimson Goliath comes with one of the most disturbingly grotesque origin stories we have seen so far in Marvel history. Stranded in space on Ego, the living planet, Ross Romero faces a nightmare as he battles horrific cancerous creatures, and as it happens, there comes a red light at the end of this tunnel but it changes him forever. The arrival of this new Red Hulk makes Hulk's gamma-based powers look a tad bit sad. With that being said, let's discuss how a random guy on a sentient planet manages to become Marvel's newest Red Hulk. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. How did Ross Romero transforms into the Red Hulk? Rage Reborn begins in the future year of 2099 in Nueva York, where we see Ross Romero and his friends drink and party together one last time before he leaves for his mission at Alchemex, the company he works for. Romero has always had the dream of seeing the unseen and knowing the unknown, so when his company gave him the opportunity to lead an expedition to a different planet to mine its resources, he leapt at it. Next we know, Ross Romero and his crew make their journey towards Ego, a planet that is said to be living and alive. Before starting the landing sequence on the planet, Ross notices how sad the planet looks, almost like it had its eye shot off, but his crew member Ed dismisses it by saying they are just random craters and ridges one would usually find on rogue planets. Once the entire Alchemex crew lands on Ego, Ed sets up their machines to dig the soil of the planet. Meanwhile, Ross notices how incredibly amazing Ego is because there were elements on this planet that he had never seen before. Even the grass on Ego is so perfect that they seem to be be more like hair or cilia. Apparently, it was even reacting to Ross's touch, almost like it was afraid of something. This is when it strikes him that there was something alive in the soil, which means they should run tests to determine what it is. But before he could do anything about it, Ed and the rest of the crew fired the drill into the planet's bed to dig up a core sample for Alchemex. Sadly, the turnout of this was not how they expected it to be. Suddenly, the ground starts moving, their ship starts rocking, and the defense mechanism of the living planet activates as white colored gruesome sentient beings rise up to protect it. It almost looked as if they were made from the very soil of Ego and had the entire Alchemex crew surrounded before they could do any further damage to its core. Within moments, these abominations got hold of Jay and turned him into a heaping pile of slush inside a spacesuit. Before the others could make out what they are dealing with, Dex notes that they are reacting to foreigners entering their planet, just how white blood cells react when it comes across any foreign elements in a human body. And to a certain point, this explanation makes sense as these aliens grew out of ego and are white in color. Anyways, as Ed, Dex, and Romero run for their lives to make it to their ship, Dex gets taken down by these abominations and Romero's plasma gun stops working. Upon seeing another crew member being taken down, Ross gets visibly upset while he tells Ed that Alchemex is to be blamed for their situation as the company must have known about the existence of life on ego, which meant they could never mine its resources as it would mean stabbing it. Alchemex knew that Ross Romero would never agree to the mission if he knew the truth, and so they kept it a secret from him until the very end. But the real twist of this mission comes at the end of their escape. As Ed goes in to start the launch mission of the ship, he smirks about a certain bonus waiting for them back at home and shockingly, he zaps Ross with his plasma gun, throwing him out of the ship after mentioning that he does not have intentions to split his bonus with anyone else. Absolutely shocked by the betrayal from his company and his crew, Ross wastes no time to try and start up his plasma gun, but it does not help as the gravity of Ego was tugging on the clip's plasma. Still, the clip pops open and he starts shooting his gun while running away from the sentient beings chasing after him. But Ross then runs into a cave and slips down something, thus leaving behind the fleshy bipedal abominations from hunting him. As he states, once they stopped finding him a threat to Ego, they stopped chasing him. However, Ross Romero now has other issues to deal with because he has been on the planet for almost nine days without food and water. Huddled inside a pulsating cave of living tissue, Romero 
Pharaoh has used up the last of his supplies. He is gradually starving as there is no food on the planet. Plus, Ross also has not been able to stomach the water he drank from Ego, and the air is barely breathable. But as he is reflecting on his agonizing final days while almost dying of hunger and thirst, Ross thinks about how his dream of wanting more got him here after he was betrayed by his bosses and his crew. As the last bit of his will seems to fade, Ross notices something strange that the air seems to be getting cleaner. Desperately thirsty, he finds that the water on the planet has somehow become drinkable, offering a brief but strange glimmer of hope in his dire situation. In his final desperate moments, with his stomach gnawing at itself, something strange happens as the planet presents Ross with a vivid red fruit. Believing that the planet grew the fruit to help him, the abandoned explorer devours it hungrily, without any hesitation. Given that he was dying of hunger, Ross barely had the privilege to argue and once he ravenously begins to consume the strange gift, he mentions how the fruit tastes like sweet iron, like iodine has been mixed with volatile acidity, and its texture is like liver and soft scrambled eggs which makes it disgusting yet great. But once he eats the entire thing, Ross begins to feel ill. At first he feels like he could run for days, but then he feels something strange moving inside him. It is then that readers of Annihilation 2099 issue number witness the horrifying transformation of Ross Romero and the birth of a new cosmic Red Hulk. Once his transformation is complete, Romero realizes that what he ate was no ordinary fruit. Desperate to preserve a part of himself, Ego, the living planet, created a piece of this fruit from his own planetary flesh and offered it to Romero while he was on the brink of starvation. When Romero ate it, he was overwhelmed by Ego's power primordial, triggering a mutation that transformed him into the new Red Hulk. As the mutation sets in, Romero notices how he feels heavy, as now there was too much weight on his bones. His body, his hands, and his legs had all grown into a ginormous size, almost making him feel invincible. From what it looks like, his Alchemex spacesuit has also mutated along with him and merged into his body during the transformation, with the wires enlarging to fuse into his skin. What I am trying to say is, Romero's black and red suit is now the new Red Hulk's new appearance, only with a more gigantic and menacing look. The new Red Hulk's fight with his first enemy. Once his body has finished the transformation, the Red Hulk ponders over how he does not feel pain, even if he remembers what it once felt like. Then, all of a sudden his memories start surging, which makes him feel like he knows and understands everything. This is when we finally learn that it is not just the soil, but the entire planet is alive. As he becomes one with Ego, the ancient living planet, the Red Hulk exclaims how his eye is now the memory of a wound, almost like a meteor attack to the head, and and because Ego sustained Ross with his own flesh, he could feel the change in him through the cosmic charge in his cells, his powers, and his memories. This is when the Red Hulk figured out that before his transformation, the living planet was terrified as it was being attacked. Unfortunately, the attacker has not given up, which can apparently be determined by him through the shifts in gravity and in pressure. Because the Red Hulk and Ego are now a part of each other, it does not take him long to understand that the attacker is none other than Terax, the planet Hunter. Now on the next page of the comic, the tables turn as we meet Terax in all his glory. The planet Hunter stands tall with the sharp end of his axe plunged into Ed's body. Seems like he did not get the bonus after all, but you get what you give, right? As Terax stands tall, he openly addresses Ego, whose festering wound and stink makes it easy for the planet Hunter to track him down. Terax challenges Ego that no matter how many inheritors he is desperate to seek, his power would fade in front of the mighty planet Hunter who is hell-bent on having his kill. He literally calls the Red Hulk as Ego's living tumor hiding within the dying corpse of the planet, but not for long as Terax is set to erase the living planet, his primordial power, and its spawn. Next we know, the Red Hulk and Terax stand facing one another, ready for battle. When Terax notes that the Red Hulk pulses with the strength of the living planet through the power primordial, he mentions that there is no greater game than the cosmic forces. But Hulk was not having any of it, he has been a survivor and was certainly not letting Terax get away because the Planet Eater has hunted and killed Ego for sport, even if the Living Planet was a unique entity in the entire universe. With a power-packed punch from the Red Hulk, the fight begins as they leap onto one another, doing some considerable damage. In the middle of the fight, we learn that the Red Hulk is genetically attached to Ego through memory and is the Living Planet's last wish in the form of a cosmic weapon born from Ego's dying rage. After fighting for quite a while, the Red Hulk finally takes Terax down with one final blow to his face, throwing him 
him into the cracks on the planet. Even though the Planet Eater tries to command the soil to stop burying him, Terax realizes that it is now repelling his commands and with that, Ego takes his killer down with him. Rage Reborn ends with the Red Hulk thanking Ego for his new life while walking on the surface of the dying planet. But then, he senses a certain rage in him, something that his new body is struggling to control. However, he knows that he cannot let this rage take him down and instead should use it as a fuel to keep going. After thanking Ego for everything, the Red Hulk reaches out with his new awareness as he senses hyperspace humming around him. Using his anger as an ignition switch for the very first time, we see the Red Hulk taking a giant leap into the unknown. Is Ross Romero's spacesuit bonded with his flesh? When Romero consumed the fruit grown by the living planet, Ego's power primordial surged through him, ultimately leading to his transforming into the Red Hulk. But it did not just mutate his body, but also fused with the red spacesuit he was wearing, bonding it to his skin and giving him his distinct red appearance. The power primordial could not tell the difference between Romero's flesh and his suit, so it combined them into the new Red Hulk's look. What makes this transformation even more horrifying is is that it appears to be permanent because unlike the original Red Hulk, Romero can't change back to his human form. Plus, Ross's transformation stands apart because it comes from a cosmic source rather than gamma radiation. Instead of gaining powers through exposure, he was literally infused with the cosmic energy of an elder of the universe. Much like how Galactus creates his heralds by granting them the power cosmic like he did with Silver Surfer, Romero also received all of Ego's power primordial. This means that, similar to the Silver Surfer, Romero is permanently changed changed, with his spacesuit becoming an inseparable part of his new form. Whether permanent or not, Romero's transformation is undeniably disturbing, but the story behind the design of Red Hulk 2099 makes it even more intriguing. In the back matter of Annihilation 2099, Rage Reborn, artist Pete Woods shared his design notes, giving us a glimpse into the creative process behind Red Hulk's look. Surprisingly, the inspiration for his final appearance comes from two legendary science fiction artists, Jack Kirby and H.R. Giger. If you take a closer look, Red Hulk 2099's biomechanical look is a clear nod to H.R. Giger's famous style, best known from his design of the Xenomorph and Alien. You can also see hints of Jack Kirby's influence when you take in the whole design. The entire biotechnical details from his suit also show up on his body after the mutation, with the bright yellow hues on his back acting as super luminal cannonballs. If you see the suit Romero wore and the appearance of the Red Hulk side by side, you will see them as identical beings with a difference in size. Not just that. During the mutation, the wires from the suit had pretty much weaved into Hulk's skin and muscles. His head and back are also covered with spikes that resemble Romero's funky hair. But the game changes here is that these spikes rise up straight and trail down through his back once the Red Hulk is enraged. Cool, right? Between the artistic inspiration and the in-world explanation for his red appearance, it is easy to see why this version of Red Hulk has one of the most unsettling origins in Marvel Comics. The new Red Hulk's giant leap is a literal space launch. While the original Hulk's strength was legendary, allowing him to jump from state to state, the new Red Hulk takes things even further. Sure, we see Ross Romero using that same immense power, but as the issue wraps up, he channels his strength into a massive leap, propelling himself out into space with a powerful leg-driven interstellar launch. I think Red Hulk's new leap is a brilliant twist on the concept of a spacefaring Hulk, something that was recently explored in the mainstream Hulk series during the Smashtronaut era. In those comics, Bruce Banner transformed his entire Hulk form to travel through space, using his rage as propulsion. Red Hulk 2099 takes this idea further, combining similar powers with cosmic awareness, which allows him to pinpoint specific locations and inhabited worlds as he leaps through space. Other Hulks have explored new powers in space as well, like Amadeus Cho's Hulk, who discovered he could transform his gamma blood into high-impact bullets by striking it in low gravity, turning each droplet into a deadly projectile. So, it will be exciting to see how Red Hulk 2099 continues this trend, because instead of just visiting space, he is truly embracing his role as a cosmic hero, taking the Hulk's powers to a whole new level. The future of the new Red Hulk might not be what we hope for. Most of Marvel's gamma-mutated characters have struggled with control from time to time, but they ultimately retain their free will. Ross Romero's transformation into the Red Hulk is different, as it is driven by a sentient cosmic force that deliberately provides him with the key to his mutation. Terrified by the grotesque golems that resemble the planet's strange landscape, it was only after his mutation when Ross realized that the celestial body, the abominations, and the strange fruit were all 
part of the same entity. By eating the planet's fruit, Romero might have become part of the same living organism which raises the question of whether he will retain his own identity or become a puppet of the planet's will. Plus, the power primordial is still largely a mystery, which means there could be no limits to Red Hulk's potential. With this raw cosmic energy now in his possession, the new Red Hulk could become even more powerful. While the previous Red Hulk used his abilities to wreak havoc, Ross Romero's future remains unclear. So far, Annihilation 2099 has already added some dark twists to the stories of Marvel's iconic characters, and if this miniseries is anything like the original Annihilation event, things could get even worse for the heroes of Marvel 2099. Only time will reveal the fate of these twisted characters as even darker threats loom on the horizon. With that being said, what are your thoughts about Marvel's latest Red Hulk? Let us know in the comment box below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.